Hello everybody, today we're going to have some fun with SSH uh, from Windows with Certificate. Now, I know that many of you already know that we need to use PuTTY and some of you use mRemote and GS, that this is my preferred tool for operating SSH or RDP from uh, Windows. But those two are connected and we're going to do it on uh, EC2, an Amazon instance and I'm going to enjoy it a lot. So I'm creating a really small machine for this demonstration and I'm using a key pair that I created for my training. And I'm just going to click launch instance. It's gonna be very, very small instance, but we would need to uh, connect to it using the uh, key uh, that uh, I generated yesterday. And to do so, this is, uh, you know, I mean, using PuTTY, probably you did it once or twice, but uh, with certificate, it's a little bit different. So as you know, you need to convert the certificate from PPK to PEM. And uh, this was already um, uh, covered in so many videos, so we're not going to do that. But I already, I already did that, so I have the PPK file for uh, the um, uh, for the windows for the linux machine and well for for the key itself and what i'm about to do is just use it so uh, why are am i doing this at the same time the uh, the putty and emery mode g because they are directly connected right so when we go to the tools over here it will allow me to open putty at some place right so i'll go to options and I'll go to advanced and it says launch putty. I, I could do it uh, from uh, the start menu, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to put an IP over here and this IP doesn't matter at all. Uh, I'm just showing both methods at the same time, but you could put but you could put any dummy IP if you want, because this is going to be for the M remote NG. But uh, for the putty, you need to use the real IP or the real DNS ser the server uh, address, doesn't matter. And we're going to give it a name. So we're going to say ops be, uh, ops be enablement. Enablement. And the reason I'm actually using the PPK key because I need to recognize it later. Right, so I'm not giving you the name of the machine because I'm going to use it multiple times later on. So connected to the first machine, of course, you'll go to the SSH, you'll go to Auth, and you'll uh, click on Browse, and you'll find the PPK key that you need to use. And now we are going to, oh, come on, what did I do? Uh, let me see if I made a mistake over here. We click on Auth, we need to click Browse, we need to select the PPK. And we'll go back to the session and we'll click Save once again. And the very important part is going to be, I think it's going to be user at, uh, no, it's going to be EC2 user, I think, EC2 user, something like that. And now I'm going to connect to it actually. So uh, let's do this, just that. And I'll do it by just double clicking uh, the, uh, the session. So I need to load it, double clicking the session. And then it says yes or no. And I guess the EC2 user was uh, the wrong one. Let me fix that real fast. To do it, I'll go to the uh, console over here. I'll click on connect. And somewhere it's going to say, oh, it's EC2 dash user, right? It's EC2 dash user. And I made, I did a underscore. So let's do load and we're going to do this. Click save, double click the button and we are in. So this is fine and everything is great, right? We can uh, do a bunch of stuff, fantastic. Uh, probably you saw this methodology, but how do we do it in M remote in G? Because for every mode in G, it's quite a problem. Let me show you. I'll create a new folder. I'll call it SSH. I'll create a, uh, a new connection. And go to SSH test. And when we will go to the settings over here, that this is where the problems start. Because if you go and select the SSH version 2 or something, you see, you get the port, you get the session, 
Uh, what you don't get, uh, actually you get to, to use the host name as well. I think this is this one. Yes. So we're going to paste this and the username is going to be ec2-user. Now, where where is the certificate? It, it doesn't exist. I mean, we could go to the inheritance, inheritance tree if you're familiar with the settings for um, remote ng, uh, but you wouldn't find here anything. You, I mean, you could add a bunch of settings to this list, but it doesn't really do anything for you. And uh, the reason is we need to use a saved putty session to actually uh, to actually use the setting. So what we do, we'll go to the putty session, click on down uh, arrow to select the drop down list. And now we have the putty session on which it is based. Basically all settings except for the address are inherited from this putty session. So if you have multiple ones, for M remote NG, you just shuffle those around according to your needs instead of trying to keep every putty session in line in your terminal and this is it, you are connected to it right now. So this is how you do it. I hope you like this methodology and it does something for you and I'll see you in the next one.